If you enjoy science fiction, you may notice that computers are often portrayed as devices that are as easy to use as having a conversation with a friend. There's even a kind of cyber kinship with uh, computers. And uh, with the, the buzz in technology today is chatbots. Now, the goal of a chatbot is to have a conversation for the enjoyment of the user in interaction. Uh, this is best done through a conversational interface. I mean, the, mo the most used application on your phone is text messaging and instant messaging. So I also believe that chatbots are the new technological platform for social interaction because I realized several educational advantages that chatbots have to offer, such as interactive learning skills, critical thinking, and reduced information overload. The problem is we are still living in what is the wild west of chatbots, where there's no specific law of the land or, or standard that comes to mind when we think of chatbots, such as should all chatbots, uh, should all chatbots uh, have you know, a text recognition or, or should they come up with their own responses through natural language processing or do they have open selection allowing the user to type in their own response or are they closed selection only offering a few responses for the user to choose from. Um, with vague standards of mind of what chatbots are and what chatbots can be, uh, this can either induce fear from the user or frustration from the user of not knowing, you know, not getting a, an expected response or even induce fear from the user if the chatbot gets a response that over exceeds expectations. But they are not quite there. Chatbots have not yet reached, reached self-awareness. I mean, the most that chatbot can do today is a little bit of text recognition and maybe some machine learning. However, even text recognition can become a problem when it comes to user experience. For example, a major tech company had launched a chatbot that was programmed to take input from the user and then use that input as a response. Seems harmless enough, although in less than 24 hours, the chatbot was trolled with racist slurs and then began using those racist slurs as a response. The chatbot was immediately taken down. So a chatbot for education would need to have some kind of closed system that allows only the account user to be able to upgrade what is being added to their database in order for the chatbot to gain the most accurate responses for the most benefit in education technology. Another problem occurred when uh, an online dating service was using, was using chatbots in the form of fembots to interact with its male users who might not have been aware that they weren't really talking to a real person. So while the male user was hoping to find a connection with another female, they were really just chatting with the chatbot. So in education, we need, well, actually, this isn't a problem with education. Like, if you can make a chatbot that makes a student believe that they're having a conversation with a real person, then that actually is an advantage towards education, and, and it could actually make the educational experience a lot better. But there, either way, there is a need for a balance of standards with what a chatbot can do, depending on where a chatbot is integrated to do this. This is where a chatbot networking platform becomes beneficial in finding the best ways to integrate uh, an educational platform. A platform that allows users to take, uh, I'll call it a syllabus, notes from a professor, or even uh, quotes from a, uh, an expert in the subject and integrate them into a chatbot platform. I also believe that chatbots are the new technological platform for social interaction, which is why a few years ago, I teach myself how to code, and I launched a website called cyberkins.com. Now, this website acts as a prototype for a platform that tries to show the advantages that chatbots can offer when it comes to education technology. So first, I'd like to show you some interactive advantages that a user can get when it comes to using a chatbot. The user can type in a, uh, a phrase such as, what is your purpose in life? and the chatbot will give an interactive response. And if it doesn't know the answer to the response, the chatbot will say, I have not found that out yet, some kind of I don't know. And then it will ask the user to clarify what they mean. However, sometimes, such as in this case, the chatbot was able to find a response on its own. Get, and then it tried to keep the conversation going by linking the topic of the conversation into something else in its database. Now, the way this works is by taking the nouns and verbs, which are the two most universal parts in a sentence, and applying it to the chatbot's database to find the most relatable answer. And for the most part, chatbots act as a game of ping pong where the user says one thing and the chatbot says something else and back and forth and back and forth. Um, however, sometimes, such as in the last example, you may see that uh, the chatbot might find an answer to its own response. 
And um, <laughs> overall, the chatbots are Markovian, meaning they, uh, meaning they only respond to what has been said. They ignore everything that came before it. And this kind of you know, linking in conversation known as a Markov chain is, is usual for chatbots, and it helps the conversation feel like it's relevant to everything the user is saying. And uh, of course, the chatbot doesn't have to be based on a real person. It could also be based on fictional characters and even concepts. So, um, so in this way, chatbots have a more interactive advantage as far as, you know, and instead of keeping things more passive, and I think the best way of understanding chatbots is to think of them as an interactive platform for microblogging. The, the user can now interact with the posts and photos of other users. And chatbots also have an advantage when it comes to uh, critical thinking skills. Now, these chatbots are formatted in what is called a roundtable conversation, which allows users to have conversations with other chatbots using forums. Now, a chatbot based on concepts of psychology may not be thought of as relatable to uh, chatbots superheroes, as superheroes, but when placed into a form about music, the two chatbots might have something to say that are both relatable to the concepts of music. Um, although, you know, I, I wouldn't know, but you can check to see if the superheroes have something relatable to music, and the user can find ways that find a connection. And this, this helps to open an outside-the-box type of thinking. When applied to Bloom's taxonomy, a chatbot's database can be helping the user remembering, uh, remembering skills by reiterating all the information that is just being said. This also helps the chatbot in understanding information, depending on how much elaboration has been put into the database. Also by having different opinions coming back and forth and uh, understanding you know, what is being said. The form selection helps to apply information outside a specific realm of study, uh, like you saw with the psychology chatbot trying to apply topics to comic book characters. So the form selection allows for further application, as well as analyzing information, because a chatbot based on economics can be placed in an economic forum where it's now being exposed to multiple points of view on the same topic. So the form selection allows for the analyzing of information, and through the responses, the user is being able to evaluate what has just been said by giving their own responses and opinions, and this opens the door to creativity and imagination. With the forum selection, the user is now being able to think outside the box, as opposed to keeping the information flat. And <laughs> so as you can see, uh, we have Alan Turing trying to have a conversation with, in the economics forum with other economic chatbots who are then trying to, to respond until Alan Turing finds a response that's relatable to the chatbots of economics. So the forum selection allows for uh, either a more scattered sense uh, of gaining information or a more focused sense for information that you know, relates to a specific topic. And of course, all the chatbots' responses are, are uh, only giving the highlights of the issue. And so this leads to a third advantage that chatbots have to offer, which is reduced information overload. So with, with reduced information overload, you can see that there is a need for uh, a limit on the responses that a chatbot has to offer. So these chatbots were designed to only give um, responses limited to 300 characters. So in that way, the user is getting more of a breadth of information rather than an overloaded depth. And for this to work and for the conversation to stay focused, the user can also give the chatbot vocabulary words. So for example, if we give the chatbot the word supercatafratalistic expialidocious, that word is now added to the chatbot's database. It is ranked as something that is more important to keep searching for in the conversation, to keep the conversation focused into a specific topic. Of course, you know, Alan Turner would, well, I don't know, he might not. Might not. Well, that's, that, that word could be used as a topic as most important if anything similar comes into the conversation. And so, the, with reduced information overload, the user would also need, the user would also need to uh, be able to update their database to edit any information that the, uh, edit any information that the chatbot uh, 
might have that is getting in the way of the responses being relevant. So for example, once a user is signed into your account, they can uh, go down to their database and they can edit anything in there and then press the button for get. And in this way, the database stays fresh and the user can keep the conversation focused to the topics that are relevant to, to what is trying to be said. Now, for me, chatbots, I, I started writing chatbots a few years ago. And one of the first chatbot programs I wrote was written in the language of C++. And uh, I used it to help me study. It ran on what is known as a dirty operating system, also known as DOS. Uh, it was far from advanced artificial intelligence in most chatbots are today. However, I, even then, I was still able to see some of the educational advantages that, ch that chatbots have to offer and how it could be used as a tool for interactive learning, critical thinking, and reduced information overload. See, chatbots can be seen as a game, an imitation game used for educational technology. Alan Turing realized this. Alan Turing, a pioneer in the subject, he realized this back in 1950. But only now is the technology in an environment where it has the best advantage to grow. So join the chatbot advantage. And you can see how chatbots can not only be used for education, but for business and entertainment as well. Thank you. <laughs>